and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be walking you through a tutorial of how to make paperless paper towels. So we're just going to take some um, fabric and we will go around the edges and edge those up to keep them from fraying and we'll have some nice paper towels. Uh, I love to use these. We use them as napkins for everything. Um, I just have this cute little container that we set on our counter and most of them are dirty right now but so this is usually full and I just fold them up in here. A lot of people like to use a paper towel roll and wrap them around there. That's just not something that I'm interested in doing every week is wrapping them up but so these are great we do not use paper towels in our house anymore um just saves so much paper and you just pop them in the wash and these this is a newer one that i've made these you can see um, are getting kind of drab but these are like over a year old and they get used um and washed maybe two maybe three times a week depending on the week but i like to use um, flannel. I use 100% cotton flannel and I find that that is the best. It takes a few washes to get it really absorbent but that's what I like and it's relatively cheap. Typically I will just go to Joann's or your local fabric store and look through the remnant bin and there's usually enough in there to make some napkins and you don't need a ton. Of, you can get quite a few out of a yard of fabric that you can get for four or five dollars or go in the remnant bin and you can get it for a dollar or two. So just kind of depends or if you want something cute that is going to match your kitchen or your aesthetic, then you might need to pay a little bit more, but that's totally up to you. But these are just quick and easy and I will give you my measurements of what I use and they can always be adjusted to fit your needs. So let's get started. All right, so to get started, I just wanted to show you these are some that I have already cut out. I haven't finished the edges. These are just um, some extras of the ones that I've done for my family and I like to do um, 10 inches by 12 inches and that's just a good size for us. I don't pre-wash this it just makes I don't if you need a specific size make sure you pre-wash it and, and dry your fabric to shrink it because it is 100% cotton so it will shrink a little bit but since I just fold them up and throw them in there and they're for nothing special I don't really care if it shrinks after I make them um, it just makes the fabric is nice to work with before it's washed. So these are just some. And then, so I got, like I said, you can go to the remnant bin at your fabric store, um, shop clearance sections, whatever. And so I picked this up at Joann's um, in the remnant section for, I don't know, it's like a little bit of half yard. And this was probably going to make me four napkins I think because it's not quite tall enough but <clears throat> I paid about a dollar for it so about a quarter a napkin is a pretty good price so I'm going to start by just cutting um a 10 inch strip because that's what's going to make me get or sorry a 12 inch strip and then I'm going to cut them 10 inches wide because that's what's going to help me get the most out of my fabric so I'm going to actually fold this in half so I can use my whole ruler. So, 12 inches. Okay, and then I'm going to open it up and I'm going to do 10 inches wide now. So I'm just going to cut it in sections of 10 inches. So if you have a yard and you're doing your um, 12 inches tall, you will be able to get three rows out of that. So that'll give you 12 napkins total per yard if you are doing um, 10 by 12. And if you are using, I think this is 42 inch wide fabric, 44 maybe, but so you'll be able to get four wide different fabrics. You might be able to get more or less. So just, I would measure it and kind of do some math before you start cutting to see how you can 
use the most of your fabric. <clears throat> but so what I like to do is I typically finish mine on my serger and um, the lazy way I do it is I take my square. I do like to have rounded quarters, but I take my square and I just go around and when I get to the corner, I just turn it and cut off that corner on my serger. So the corners aren't perfect. Let me see here. Like this one's pretty good actually, but so they're not going to always be completely even. But like I said, these are just for my family and it's just a quick, easy way for me to do it. So I will show you how I do that. The other way is if you want to have your nice round edges, what you're going to do is you're going to fold your rectangle into fourths just like so and then you're going to take some sort of round edge object this is just a spool of ribbon and i'm going to just put it up here and go to my corner the corner with all the raw edges there's no folds and i'm just going to kind of trace this onto here and then i'm going to go with my cutter and Cut that off so that then all of my corners are nice and equal and rounded. And this is also probably what you're going to want to do if you are doing this on a sewing machine. You can do this with um, just a zigzag stitch or an overcasting stitch if you have one. But so now I have that and I will do that. Yeah, I would do that on all of mine before I cut it. But like I said, I do it the lazy way and just let my serger cut the corners off for me. So you can choose how you want to do it if you want to do your corners you could leave them square if you wanted if that's what you want but like i said i like the round edges so there's there's a lot of different ways you can do this to keep it simple or you can put more time into it and make them look really nice and all identical so just like i said up to you of the amount of time and effort you want to put into these all right so as i had mentioned i'm going to be cutting the corners off of my fabric with my serger so even if I was doing head and round I would start on a straight edge and just put that under my serger and so I want to make sure I have my blade on because if I'm cutting the corners off I need that blade on so I'm just going to start sewing around and I will just turn my fabric and cut that corner off there. Snip it off and finish your ends. Trim. I'll fix that in a second. And voila. Yeah. So and you can see here that um, my threads did come off of that a little bit, and that is because I pulled it too much away out of my thing. So it means I was going a little too fast and pulling a little too much. Um, so may need to slow down and I just I did want to show you that 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 is what happens it's perfectly fine um it's not going to affect anything with it it just doesn't really look as nice so if that happens to you um just slow down a little bit you may want to decrease your stitch length that kind of will help go around your curves but um then all that's all you have to do and I will show you as well how to do it on a regular machine all right so I am over here on my regular machine now and I do have the piece that I cut the rounded edges on and what I'm going to do is I'm going to I want my stitch length to be a little bit shorter on these zigzags I'm going to set my machine to a zigzag and I'm at about a one and a half and what we're going to do I'm leaving my with it a three but what we're going to do is the same thing we're going to start in the middle and so what you want when you are doing your zigzag is you want it to hit your fabric and then to your the top of your zigzag to hit just outside of your fabric so that's going to enclose your edge so you're going to go here and then it's going to hop off so you want to align your needle 
so that it is the outside of your fabric is right at that needle point like so and then you're just gonna go nice and slow and you do need to back stitch at the beginning and I'm using white just to kind of help see my stitches when it's done on this blue fabric for you guys you can match your thread you don't have to again it's your project okay so you might have to play with your stitch length that one was a little too short so I'm going to increase it a little bit corners you just need to go slow and slowly turn that back. So I got both of those sewn up. This one you can see on my serger and this one was a zigzag on my sewing machine. And um, if you have a serger, I recommend that that is what you use. It just gives a nicer finish and it's going to keep that fraying down. Where with the zigzag, you won't have tons of fraying, but you will probably have a little bit at first. And like here, I didn't go quite over the edge with the top of my zigzag. So that is fraying a little bit, but it'll go away after probably two or three washes, you might just have to give them a little trim. But where with your surgery, you really shouldn't have any issues with any um, fraying at all. But these are just something really fun and simple that you can do with whatever you have on hand. All right, so now that you have your new napkins, I hope you love them. We love them at our house. Um, took my husband a little bit to get on the cloth napkin paper towel train but now we are all about it and we just use them throw them in the wash and then I fold them up and I put them in my little container and leave it on the counter so and as I mentioned um, earlier that this is something that can be super quick super cheap and super simple or you can put some more time and effort into it um, put a little bit more money in if you want to pick out different prints or whatever you want but it's again your project you make it what you want um, you can change the measurements if you want to fit what you need you also can use like I had um, it's about six inches wide piece left I do like to cut those up and make smaller squares they're great for um, cloth wipes if you have a baby or to just throw in a purse use it as a tissue anything like that so that you would just do the same thing, adjust your size and finish those edges. And then you have reusable tissues or wipes, whatever you may need those for. So I hope you liked this video. And if you did, make sure you give it a thumbs up and let me know in the comments and then subscribe to my channel so that you get notified whenever I release a new video. And if you want some more sewing content and crafting content or life, make sure you follow me on Instagram at SoBex. Bye!